Jay Humphreys Platinum Sports Picks. What I'm going to do right now, basically, I don't know if you guys saw, but um, Colin Coward, who is a very well-known uh, ESPN American sports personality, he's got his own show called The Herd, and uh, what he says carries a lot of weight in American sports. He's grown more and more influential over the last couple of years. I remember when I was watching ESPN back before I started uni in like 2013, he was more of a contributor on a lot of shows, but uh, one day he had his own show and a lot of the things that he says are being um, posted uh, everywhere on Fox Sports or on ESPN and things like that uh, about his opinions with LeBron, uh, sorry, something he said about LeBron James. And he's always saying... um, He's always saying a lot of things that are being taken very seriously. Now, something that I posted in the NFL group was a link to all of Colin Coward's picks. And Colin Coward has gone directly against four of my uh, six line predictions. And he's actually gone against all of my main ones. So a lot of my big bets, Colin Coward, excuse me, has gone against. So what this podcast is going to be is he has taken the time to tell you or tell his listeners why he thinks that this team's going to beat this team, why this team's going to cover, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go through and give you guys a little bit of extra confidence and tell you guys why I think you should take these teams that I've given you. And we'll see whose logic is, you know, makes more sense. Uh, but really, we're not going to find out whose logic's, logic makes more sense until, until Sunday, until Monday morning. But I think that there's a few flaws in some of the things that Colin Coward has been saying. And although he's a professional, I'm well on my way to being a, a professional sports um, personality. Um, and I think that a couple of the things that he said are flawed in regards to the picks that he's given out. Now, this one is called Why the New York Jets plus three and a half. Well, something that Colin Coward doesn't have is Colin Coward doesn't have, in my um, opinion and under my assumption, the ability to read lines and take into consideration what's happening um, in that side of the betting. Now, I... I'm under the impression that Colin Coward looks at these games and thinks, okay, well, here's this personnel matchup, blah, 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 blah. Um, he, uh, you know, A's matching up against B. He plays good on artificial turf. You know, the, the wind's blowing in that direction. Whereas with I'm taking a little bit of a different approach to it. However, Co- um, Colin Coward did use some impressive um, betting lingo, talking about uh, covering on the road and, and eating points and and uh, two and a half being crucial in the Bengals game, blah, 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 blah. So it seems to me like he does have a little bit of gambling experience. So what he has said about the New York Jets and the Cincinnati Bengals is that the Bengals were pretty much unstoppable last year when Andy Dalton was in the team, when he wasn't injured. Um, and, And I guess that's a true statement. I mean, the Bengals lost Andy Dalton throughout the midway part of last season, but before that, they started lights out. They were very, very impressive. Um, And... They didn't look like losing up until Andy Dalton uh, was out of the team. They are eight and zero against the spread in, the, in their last eight road games. However, I'll tell you something about the Jets. This Jets team, um, in my opinion, is quite um, underrated, um, uh, undervalued, and something that um, I know about the New York Jets is that they're quite a good team against the spread at home. Now, let's talk about some Jets trends. They're eight and three against the spread in their last eleven home games. Um, and they're four one and one against the spread in their last six games overall, dating back um, into last year. Um, and the Jets, although they do have a player out, Sheldon Richardson, the, the Bengals have got some some outs as well. And I think this Bengals team, they they're missing Mohamed Sanu, that second guy on offense. They brought in Brandon LaFell, who is their new number two target, right, to work in tangent with AJ Green. So they've got AJ Green, they've got Mohamed Sanu, and normally they would have Tyler Eifert, their, their big body athletic tight end. Tyler Eifert is out for this game. So with Tyler Eifert being out, it allows the Jets to focus more of their attention on AJ Green. If they have somebody like Darrell Revis on AJ Green, you know, that may be satisfactory, but there will be situations where they want to put somebody else on AJ Green, which is called double coverage or, you know, um, 
they want to give a little bit of extra attention to AJ Green because you've got to respect a receiver who's that talented. So yeah, I'm just going to talk to you about some um, actual on the field positional personnel um, th- advantages that I think the Jets are going to have in this game. So w- what they're going to do is they're going to be able to put a little bit of extra attention to AJ Green and they will probably feel comfortable putting a guy like Buster Screen, who's their second corner, on Brandon LaFell out there on an island and seeing how we can go against him. Brandon LaFell has been a pretty good quarterback, a uh, pretty good wide receiver, excuse me, over the years, but you know hasn't really done well unless he's been getting thrown to by Tom Brady. I mean, the guy... Um, isn't one of the quarterbacks, isn't one of the wide receivers that's going to turn a quarterback into a superstar. I haven't seen a whole lot of promise from him in the past. He's a legitimate number two kind of okay guy. He's got a nice body for it. He's a tall guy. I think he's about 6'4 or something like that. But he's somebody that, in my opinion, the person like Buster Screen on the Jets defense is going to be able to handle. Now, with Tyler Eifert being out, there really isn't a tight end worth noting on that Bengals offense. They lost Jermaine Gresham, who was a bit of a number two threat in the past years. So he's gone, and now the Bengals have um, some... I think they have... As far as I'm concerned, they've got a no-name as their tight end. I'll have a look at their depth chart right now just to confirm who they have in tight end uh, on offense, and I really don't think it's going to matter because who, it's not Tyler Eifert. A guy called Ryan Hewitt. So Ryan Hewitt, uh, he must he must be a... Yeah, is it? Okay, so this guy's 25 years of age. He's got three years experience, um, and in his career, he has 18 catches um, for 185 yards and no touchdowns. So this is the guy that is going to be playing tight end for them against this Jets secondary, who on paper is one of the best secondaries in the National Football League with Darrell Revis, uh, an old guy there. It might be some questions about his age and whether or not he's um, declining at this point in his career, but he can still get the job done. Uh, obviously, he's not going to be seeing a lot of Ryan Hewitt as Hewitt will be closer to the middle of the field, but just talking about the Jets' corners, um, Buster Screen, who in my opinion is a really, really, really good player, um, he came over to the Jets from Cleveland, um, and this guy, he's 27 years of age, um, and I... And I'm just so high on him. I think he was a really shining, a real shining light at the Cleveland Browns when he was there. Um, and I think that you know he's going to be. Uh, well, he was. Let me just think about this. Signed a five-year deal with the Jets, with the New York Jets on March 10, 2015. So I think this guy is going to be going to fit into this Jets scheme perfectly. Um, he's a little guy, five foot nine, but I really think he's going to play well. He's obviously Darrell Revis. And then let's talk about the uh, the Jets secondary here. It's going to be Calvin Pryor playing one safety. Um, New York Jets depth chart. Um, who have we got? Who is the other safety? Uh, I've got him on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember. So I'm going to have to get into this um, this these statistics here and figure out who we've got on defense or these um, positions rather. So it's going to be Marcus Gilchrist, okay? Who's a, a, a young, talented guy. Um, I'm not sure if Marcus Gilchrist has come over from another team. Uh, 27 years of age, out of Clemson. Um, yeah, he's he came from San Diego, but last year he started every single game. He had 82 tackles, seven passes defended, three interceptions. So this guy had some impressive numbers last year. So Calvin Pryor, Buster Screen, Marcus Gilchrist, and then they have Darrell Revis. So their secondary is very, very good. So I don't believe the Jets are going to have a lot of concerns with the Bengals' tight ends, okay? Uh, because they've just got no personnel there. They've got no guys who are proven, and uh, that's it, okay? Uh, Mohamed Sanu has gone to Atlanta, who was uh, their clear number two guy who was able to take a bit of attention away from AJ Green and open it up for AJ. Not saying that Brandon LaFell isn't going to get his due respect, but I am saying that it's going to be interesting to see how he can perform in this offense. So we've got AJ Green out of the left-hand side of the field or out of the right-hand side of the field, wherever he's going to be he's going to be able to get a little bit of extra attention. Now, the running back situation with the Bengals is Jeremy Hill and Giovanni Bernard. Now, Muhammad Wilkerson is playing. He's not 100%, but a lot of people aren't 100%. It doesn't matter if it's if it's week one, week four, week seven, week 11. All these players are banged up. A lot of the time they're banged up. They're carrying something, but they're going to get in there and they're going to put all the injuries and all the niggling crap behind them and they're going to, they're going to knuckle down. Sheldon Richardson is out, who is an extremely important part of this defense in the 3-4 scheme. However, he... Um, he, you know, he's going to be missed, but the Jets still have some tough guys on this defense and some really good tacklers. Um, and I think the Bengals are probably going to try and run the ball, um, and I think they're probably going to struggle to run the ball. This Jets team at home, is not they cannot be taken lightly. They're a great team at home. Right now, with this bet that we're doing, we're getting three and a half points with them, and Colin Coward did say that if that two and a half was a full three, he wouldn't touch it. It makes all the difference. So if the Bengals come out and win by a field goal, 23 to 20, we still get our win. Obviously, I sacrificed juice to get it there. I liked the Jets, but I liked them even more for a three-unit play on plus three and a half. Now, 
I, I, I just have a problem with the Cincinnati Bengals offense. I know Dalton is, is, is a good player, and Colin, uh, Colin Coward was saying he was nearly untouchable at the start of last season, but I just think that without Tyler Eifert, it's going to make a really big difference. This Jets secondary is going to be able to handle, handle AJ Green, in my opinion. Might be able to get in for about five catches for 75, 80 yards, maybe a touchdown if, if he's lucky. But I think they're going to be able to get the job done against AJ Green, and I think the defensive line that they've got, uh, the big bodies in there, are going to be able to bounce around, and, and they're going to be able to they're going to be able to handle the running backs. I probably am a little bit worried about Giovanni Bernard coming out of the backfield. He's going to create some matchup problems for the linebackers that they have there. Um, but all in all, this Jets defense against this Bengals offense, I'm really really happy with the matchups that they have. I think they're going to be able to sufficiently. Uh, cover AJ Green, and I think that the other guys running routes for the Bengals aren't going to be as threatening as a Tyler Eifert or a, or a, um, a Mohamed Sanu, who aren't, who aren't with the, the Bengals right now. Now, we talk about this New York Jets offense now. Um, this Bengals defense is very, very good. Um, however, Vontez Burfecht is out. He's got a suspension that's carried over from last year. Reggie Nelson moved on. He went um, to Oakland. So a couple of their really, really, really consistent contributors from last season are missing in this game. And if you talk about the New York Jets, I believe that they have better wide receivers. You know, like if you spread across the field, they've got uh, Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker. And I think that when you're talking about Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker, they're more threatening than an AJ Green and a Brandon LaFell. Because even though AJ Green is probably the best player out of those four, Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker, that combination is very, very balanced. Both of the guys can do a lot of damage, and you could even make the argument for Brandon Marshall nearly being on AJ Green's level. That's how good of a season Brandon Marshall had last year. So those two wide receivers are going to, you know, uh, I, I think that Brandon Marshall in particular, on a guy like Adam Jones, um, is going to be able to really cause some headaches for the Bengals. Um, and then this Jets running attack, obviously they lost Chris Ivory, but getting a guy like Matt Forte, uh, for me on offense, is a really, really, really big um, plus for them. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the quarterback, is going to be able to check it down to Matt Forte. He's the he's probably the one of the best receiving running backs we've seen in a while. Well, well he's, he's the best uh, dual threat running back. And when I say that, he can catch the balls out of the backfield and he can run the ball as well. He's always putting up, he was always putting up impressive receiving numbers in, in Chicago um, and he was also putting up impressive running numbers as well. Um, this Jets offensive line is good. Guys like Nick Mangold are holding things down there. Um, look, and I'm not, I'm not sleeping on this Bengals D-line. They've got Peko, they've got Michael Johnson, um, you know, they've got Geno. They've got some big boys. Like, this is going to be a tough game for the Jets, okay? Like, the Jets could go down in this one for sure. But talking about personnel across the field, obviously I'm not... Like, the personnel and the matchups isn't a really big part of my preparation. And it's, it's big for fantasy football gurus. It's big for NFL people who are talking on podcasts, like on ESPN and things like that. But a big part of my preparation is where the money's going. How can I get an advantage that I wouldn't otherwise get if it wasn't for public money? Um, how can I take a side that the, the bookmakers want me to be um, taking? Uh, sorry, how can I take the side that the bookmakers don't want me to be taking? And what I've seen in this game is I've seen this game open at a pick em, a dollar ninety either way, minus one ten either way. This has then gone out from from. PK to plus two and a half jets, and now I'm buying a, a buying a full point going to plus three and a half jets. I know I'm giving up the juice. I don't like doing it, but this is something that I did last year, and that full field goal can make all the difference in the world. I think that this game, under the circumstances, all things considered, should be a PK. It should be at minus one ten either way. The jets are a great team at home. They got a win over the New England Patriots last year at home. Ryan Fitzpatrick, although he fell apart a little bit towards the end of the season, was really, really impressive in the early parts of the year. They've lost Chris Ivory, but they have Matt, uh, Matt Forte back there. Their two wide receivers are healthy, Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker. Um, their offensive line is strong. Um, their defense, their secondary is excellent. I just think that although the Bengals do have some weapons on both sides of the ball, uh, they're missing Vontez Burfecht. Reggie Nelson's not coming back. Tyler Eifert's out. Yes, the Jets, are, they don't have Chris Ivory coming back and they are missing Sheldon Richardson, but I think the outs for the Bengals and the Jets probably cancel each other out. And then we've just got a good, honest game of football happening in New York, day one, and we're getting the home underdog at plus three and a half in a situation where I can tell you for a fact that the Cincinnati Bengals are probably the, have been the most public heavy bet. It was the Cincinnati Bengals and the Minnesota Vikings. The juice wore off the Vikings just because of the Teddy Bridgewater injury. And now we've got the um, Cincinnati Bengals who are attracting quite a lot of money. We're seeing a little bit of juice come back in on the Jets last minute. Things are evening up a 
little bit. It's sticking pretty firm around two and a half, but um, I can tell you it opened at PK and now it's minus two and a half for the Bengals. Um, yeah, a bit of late steam coming in on the Jets, but I'm backing that all to be sharp money, man. I think this Jets team um, are gonna be are gonna be solid. Am I a little bit worried about Ryan Fitzpatrick? Absolutely. I sold this guy last year, but I think with the weapons that he has around him, um, he's got a really good supporting cast on both sides of the football. Um, I think the New York Jets at plus three and a half is a, is a, is a great a great pick, man, because it should be PK. They've it's been driven at the plus three and a half by public money, um, and and. When I get pu- when I get public money move a line three or two and a half points, I'm going to take the other side. The bookies have set these odds at a dollar ninety either way. Nothing really has happened that much. In fact, I think the most prominent, the biggest out in this game is Tyler Eifert, and that should have even moved the, the money in, in my favour in the Jets' favour. But it didn't. It went all the way out to the Bengals. People like the Bengals. They've been making consistent playoff appearances. They've got uh, a little bit more um, ESPN friendly team. They've got AJ Green. They've got Andy Dalton. The re- that redheaded, you know guy, they've got uh, Pac-Man Jones, they've got Vontez Burfick. The Bengals have been attracting some headlines recently, and the Jets kind of in the post Sanchez era have kind of been thrown to the wolves by these betters. They had the Geno Smith time, the butt fumble, all that crap where they were going horrible. But now we look at this Jets team and they're kind of a real smash mouth, honest team um, in the AFC East. And I think that three and a half points is a good go for the Jets this weekend. It's my top play. It's a fade the public play. We're fading the public. We're taking the home underdog. We're doing all the things that have worked for me for the last two years, and they're going to continue to work until sports betting is no longer a thing, okay? The Bengals might come out and cover. They might come out and whoop the Jets and pick off Ryan Fitzpatrick four times, but I think that this Jets team is going to provide a lot of resistance for the Bengals, and I think that the Bengals may start this season off with an L in their column. So that's me telling you why I like the Jets plus three and a half, and you're going to get a podcast for every single play um, after this that I've got because I want to go through and justify everything that I've done just so you guys can be right on my side. Thanks a lot.